How were you ever comfortable in a game? I mean, you're up 20 in the second half. Obviously, you ran mid run, but are you ever comfortable? No. No. I've seen too many leads disappear. We came out the second half and didn't play with any intensity. Um, we come out their first basket, a guy who's going to be a top 10 pick in the draft. We back off of him with our hands down and he shoots it in. And then we're, sh we're shocked that he made it. Just absolutely shocked that he could make it. Out of bounds play where that was a senior, the first one. Senior to second one gives as poor an effort on an out of bounds play as we've had all year, and they make another three. And they can't understand why I'm mad at them. And it just goes from there. Then you let people get confidence. I mean, you're playing high level, those are high level players. They're not, you know, they're not, uh, everybody that we play in big five conferences has high level players. We, you, and you can't let them get started, and we let them get started. And that's it's hard, you know, when their perimeter guys make shots because those bigs are hard. They're they're a load to handle down there. We didn't put very good ball pressure on the wings, and well, go a whole bunch. We had a freshman trot down the floor, and get caught behind, and we had a senior go for a block that he had no chance to get whatsoever, so his guy could tip it in. We had penetration, did a nice job, make guys shoot an air ball, and we don't block out the other big, which is all the stuff that we talked about for two days. Pretty much everything that we talked about came to fruition. Bob, it seems like for the last four games, you've lost big leads in the second half, and players seem to indicate that they just sort of let up and. Yeah, they are, they're saying the right things. They have to play 40 minutes. But is this a troublesome habit that you see developing with this team? I'd say that's a fair statement. If you're going to throw it away, which we threw it away 10 times in the first half, or we could have really had a lead in the first half, you're now going to make free throws. We're 12 for 23, I believe it was, at the foul line. If we'd have turned it over in the second half, we turned it over four times the second half like we did. We got eight more possessions in the second half because we didn't turn it over as much as they did. And, um, but it doesn't do any good when you miss free throws. That's why they call them free. You're supposed to make them. Can you talk about Tyler Davis a little bit? 19 points, 18 rebounds. <laughs> He's everything we told our guys he was going to be. He's good. The other guy's a top ten pick. Coach, um, you know, people see that you forced 23 turnovers tonight and say, oh, well, the, you know, the press was back, working, clicking again. But players, you know, kind of disagreed with that. Uh, just our effort sucked. It, it absolutely sucked. I mean, that's that's what it came down to. JC made some effort plays uh, in the run, ran balls down from behind. Uh, we got some guys that haven't run a ball down from behind all year, and I I keep you know you get you get guys that you've you've had in big situations over and over and over again, and you you want to play them. I mean, I maybe I'd have played a freshman instead of playing seniors that don't give you effort. Does the press need to get clicking again, or do you want to maybe explore? Else? We're not playing who we were playing early. That's that's a huge part of it. We're 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 playing high level players now. You know, we didn't we didn't turn Virginia over. Um, at a, at, a, at a big clip, but we wore them down. And that's, that's part of it. But when you don't make them work the way we were making them work, you don't wear them down.
Coach, can you talk a little bit about uh, Javon? Uh, it's two games in a row now, leads the team in rebounding. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Javon deserves all the good that he gets because he works his butt off. You don't have to worry about him putting extra time in and he he does all the things that you dream that you could have a player do. Anything else? Oh, but the defensive cylinder isn't officiated the way that you were apparently told it was going to be, the way that the leagues have said they were going to be. What kind of adjustments can you make? What can you tell your defenders? There's no, I don't know. I don't know what you tell them. Uh, the, the whole thing is, is not... Um, let me think how to say this. We're trying to give absolutes to a game that really doesn't have a lot of absolutes, and and we're and we we put I think we put those officials sometimes in a bad way. Um, you know, if a guy's standing in a cylinder and a guy comes and jumps into him, technically it's supposed to be on the defensive player because they shouldn't be shouldn't be contacting in the restricted area. However, it's hard for an official to blow a whistle on a guy who just stood there. Didn't do anything really, just stood there. So, you know, I mean, and I, 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 understand, I understand the intent that they wanted to clean it up. You know, guys were taking charges underneath the basket and I, and I understand all that. And I, I don't have a problem with all that. Um, and, and and it's hard. I mean, it's uh, Elijah's last one down there. He tried to block the shot. You're supposed to be able to jump vertically and have your hands up and try to block a shot. And even though there's contact, it's, it's, it's not a foul, technically. That's a hard call. That's really a hard call. And so, you know, I think we've, we've tried to make absolutes that they aren't absolutes, if you understand what I mean. So, so they're, you know, we have a guy on a game today that I had when I first went to Cincinnati in 1991. He's not, you know, I mean, he's not going to change that much, I don't think. Not when you have officiated that long and at a, at a very high level for, for that long. Is it to have Carter and Phillip down the stretch? I mean, it seems like when you get in a close situation and things are going bad, those two guys are the most likely to bail you out. Well, one for sure will. The other one, the other one sometimes. Um, that's, but that's that's a. Uh, that's that's three years for both of them, you know, and practicing every day and trying to trying to teach them the the right way to do things. I mean, J.C. turned it over, but he I, had, I mean I know why he turned it over. He turned it over because he wanted to shoot the free throws because nobody else was making any. It's hard to fault him for that. But. Thought not to make it more out of the free throws, but practice. Guys do whatever they want to do, but sometimes if it's getting up 100, it just means getting through 100. Are they are they practicing the right way? Do they? I don't know. Do they do the same thing in practice from dribbles here's, and routines? Here, here, here's you know. I mean, I hear all that stuff, and, and I, I said on the radio out there that I've gotten all these letters of all these guys that have all the solutions. Not one of those guys is above me in the career free throw percentage still. <laughs> I looked. I looked in the in the paper today at the, the career free throw shooters, and the 13 guys above me, none of those guys sent a letter. So, you know, I mean, 
you stand out. I mean, I used to go to Carnival and win stuffed animals. You know what I mean? Well, I had a lot of pressure in that, man. <laughs> Those, those people have never stood out there in front of 14,000 people when you had to make a free throw. Those people have never stood out there in front of 14,000 people after you just ran like crazy for an hour and 45 minutes. I mean, anybody can stand there and make a free throw when there's nobody in the gym, you haven't, you haven't run and all that. You know, and then, and then the deal's, well, make them, make them I, I get this thing, you know, make them shoot free throws after they've exerted themselves. So what am I supposed to do, run, run a sprint and shoot a free throw? I mean, how would you ever have time to do anything? This is, this is, this is, a, this is a incredibly complex game. You know, if you, if you don't have a press breaker, you could lose well, because you don't have a press breaker. If you can't press, you could lose because you'd have no way to get back in the game. You need a man offense, you, and you need a man offense against a pack line. You need man offense against pressure. You may need man offense against a lot of things. Zone offense the same way. I mean, it, you, free throw line situations, out of bounds situations. There's 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 a whole bunch of things that could go wrong. But see, those guys have never sat where I sat to keep sending me those letters and probably have never been where those guys are now out on the floor. So it's easy to come up with. You know, there, there's a, there's a, my dad had this deal. There's a guy named, was a guy named Virgil Sweet in Indiana who had a, um, had a real good plan for free throws. But, you know, none of that entailed, like, taking a ball behind your back like you see guys doing. Or none, of, none of that entailed, you know, some guys dribble, some guys don't dribble, some guys, this was a, you do the same thing every single time. And it's, he's right. Try to get those guys to do the same thing every single time. You would spend the whole practice fighting with them about doing the same thing every single time. We, you, you know... We're in a we're in an age where um, young people in general don't pay as much attention as they used to. We're we're in an, we're in an age now where young people uh, have uh, not near the respect that we had for for the police. You remember when you had respect for the principal, your teacher, your coach? You know those were people you looked up to. Those were people you respected scared to death of the police. Now they're out there throwing bottles at them. And I mean, it's a different time. And I'm probably as demanding as most people in my business. But, <laughs> and I've had great free throw shooting teams. I've had bad free throw shooting teams. For, for all those people, Mike, here, send them a little note for me and just tell them, because they're probably sending you stuff too. Tell them this, you want to shoot free throws good, recruit better shooters. That's the best way. At the end of the half, you sent Beto Bolden in and he made a three. Mm -hmm. Are you ever tempted to, down the last minute of a game, minute and a half of a game like that, where you got to make, where you know you're going to have to shoot free throws, to send him in one? Is that well, that's providing they handle it and don't lose it. I mean, do you do you want do you want Javon Carter with the ball uh, instead of Beetle, or do you want Tariq Phillip with the ball? Do you want Nate Adrian with the ball? And the other thing you got to think about is if they don't foul them and we lose the ball, you got to play defense. Yeah, and that you know we really. Really, I, I kind of rolled the dice at the end, but a lot just because I wanted to see how Beetle would do in there. But um, we had a bad lineup to guard him. Nate was our biggest guy. And they still had their two bigs in. 